So the last lesson of this unit, 6.6b, will all be about these things called bearings. And our goal is to be able to represent them on a diagram, in a, in a sketch, in a graph, in order to solve problems. Uh, now, for the past week, we've been studying the law of sines and law of cosines, and the idea is that we utilize these special rules or laws in order to solve triangular problems that are not necessarily right um, angles, right triangles. Now, bearings is just, um, it's just a, a way to describe direction. I guess that's important enough to write down. A bearing is a way to describe direction. So instead of a problem just being explicit with you, hey, here's this triangle and the angle between these two lines is 58 degrees. Instead of doing that, they may describe the direction or the angle using these bearings. Now, I'm not a navigation expert. I'm not an aviation expert, which is where you would see these bearings. I, my only experience with bearings is, well, teaching it in, in, in a math class. And in my personal experience, I've only seen really two types. The first type is sometimes called the true or azimuth bearings. These types of bearings are um, measured in degrees. clockwise from the north line. Always. Doesn't matter where the object is, these true bearings are um, the measure of rotation from the north line, clockwise rotation. These types of bearings are usually represented uh, with three digits. If you ever watch any, you know, TV shows, uh, movies, whatever, and you know, it's, it's always some guy looking at a computer screen or radar and tracking an object. Oh, we have an object coming at a bearing of two, five, seven degrees. That's that's the type of bearings that these guys are. And again, they're usually three digits. So if I had a, a bearing of 68 degrees, we wouldn't say a bearing of 68. We would say a bearing of zero, six, eight degrees um, instead. If I can spell. Instead of just a plain old 68, right? So th usually three digits. So for some visual examples, if I had an object in the first quadrant, notice his bearings will always be measured from the north. It doesn't matter where the object is. If the object's in the fourth quadrant, his bearings is the amount of angles from the north line. If you had an object in the th uh, third quadrant, his bearings is the amount of angles measured from uh, the north line clockwise. So you might see bearings with this. So if you see a bearing in a, in a word problem that uses three digits, it's always measured from the north line. The second type of bearing that I've seen are called conventional. I think I've also heard them being called compass bearings. I always view these as like the uh, user-friendly, the kid-friendly language types of bearings. Um, these bearings here measure the number of degrees east or west of, forgot that word, of the north-south line. So while true bearings are very strict, you always have to start at north, you always have to measure cl uh, clockwise. Um, compass bearings or conventional bearings, they have choices. It all depends on where the object is. Um, you can either go east or west of the north-south line. The format is also written differently. Whereas conventional, uh, excuse me, true bearings are always three digits. Um, Conventional or compass bearings will have the cardinal directions in them. They are formatted usually either north or south. You've got to pick one. Then they will state the number of degrees east or west. What, um, what um, north, do we pick north or south? Do we pick east or west? It all depends on uh, what's closest to the object. So, for example... Let's use the same visual examples. If I had an object in the first quadrant, 
I hope we can see that this object, or ask yourself, is he closer to the north or is he closer to the south? I hope it's clear that this object is closer to the north line. Next, ask yourself, um, is he closer to the east or is he closer to the west? Obviously, it's very easy to see that he's closer to the east line. So I would say, and let's just pretend, let's just, let's say I broke out a protractor and this was, I don't know, 50 degrees. Because he's closer to the north, uh, uh, north line and east line, since we would say that this object is east of the north line. How far east? I would say that this object, you start at north, you walk 50 degrees east. This would be the bearing of that object. Let's do an example um, in the, I don't know, in the fourth quadrant. If you had an object in the fourth quadrant, um, I hope everyone can see that he's closer to the south line and he's going eastward. So because we made the declaration that he's closer to the south line, we do not measure this. Don't measure that. You always measure from the north-south line. So let's just make this up. Let's just say he's, I don't know, 45 degrees. So I would say that the bearing of this object is south. He's close to the south line. And then you have to go 45 degrees in the eastwardly direction. Let's just do one more example for good measure. Let's say I have an object in the third quadrant. Is he close to the north or south line? Clearly he's close to the south line. Is he going east or west? Clearly he's going west. And let's say I broke out a protractor. Um, you have to measure from the north to south line. So I have to measure this guy. Let's say he's 60 degrees. I'm just making this up. Um, so I would say that the bearings of this object is you start at south, you go 60 degrees in the westward direction. So those are the two types of bearings that you'll come across. Um, and uh, so when you read these types of bearings and word problems, you need to be able to visualize it. You need to be able to draw it. Um, so that's it. That's what bearings are. So the rest of the video will just me, me be going over uh, just a couple of examples. Little tip when it comes to doing word problems involving bearings. Anytime they say, oh, this object changes direction, this object goes to a new bearing, draw yourself a quick new coordinate plane to sort of align you uh, with the direction change. You'll see what I mean in the following examples. So example, this is a word problem, so it's going to be a bit of writing. Suppose we have a pilot, and a, this pilot sets out from an airport and heads in the direction of north 20 degrees east, flying at 200 miles per hour. After one hour, he makes a course correction. That means he changes direction. And heads uh, in the direction north 40 degrees east. Half an hour later, he lands. And looks like this example is a two-parter. Part A, find the distance between the airport and his final landing point. So let's, uh, I'll go ahead and uh, go through this example before I write down the second part. So lots of information, but would you guys agree that the gist of this problem is you have a pilot, he's flying a plane. So this is a very stereotypical type of problem. You have a pilot that flies, you have a car that drives, you have a boat that sails. Uh, we need a starting place, um, so I'm just gonna make a dot. Here's my starting place. And what does it say? So I'm gonna just read the question. A pilot sets out from an airport and heads in the direction of, hey, they gave me a bearing. 
this is probably going to be important, north, 20 degrees east. Because they gave me a bearing, I always like to draw a quick coordinate system. And that's sort of my tip to you. Every new bearing, every change in direction, draw a new coordinate system to help you uh, visualize um, the angles. Now, I'm about to say an obvious statement. Accuracy is important. However, I don't expect you guys to break out a protractor and ruler when you're doing these problems. Just be somewhat reasonable. North, 20 degrees east. So I start on the north line, and I need to rotate 20 degrees east. I'm not going to say, oh, that's 20 degrees. I'm not going to say, oh, that's 20 degrees, right? Just be reasonable. You don't need a protractor, but 20 degrees, I'm going to say, is something like that. Why not? 20 degrees. And notice I went to the right because, remember, north, south, east, west, it's 20 degrees uh, to the east of north. Then he's flying at 200 miles per hour. After one hour, he makes a course correction. So he's flying, represented by this line, flying, flying, flying for about an hour, and oops, I'm going in the wrong direction, so I need to change my course. I make a point at every course correction, and um, when you do new bearings, I like to draw a new coordinate system. This is just a habit I've gotten to. It helps me. And then I go north 40 degrees east. So again, I'm not going to break out a protractor, but I do know 40 degrees is going to be uh, less steep than 20 degrees. So make something that looks less steep. Now, if I broke out a protractor, that's probably 50 degrees, oh well, whatever. But again, it really doesn't matter as long as you're reasonably accurate. But hey, if you want to break out a protractor, I'm not going to stop you. And he travels for half an hour before he lands. Now, here's my second part with the accuracy. You have to be accurate with the lines as well. But again, I'm not going to ask you to break in a ruler. But what do we know? We know that in this trip, he goes one hour. And in this trip, he goes half an hour. Now, I don't need to be a rocket scientist to know that the one hour trip, if he's going the same speed, which we're assuming, should be sh longer than the half hour, um, specifically by half. So I'm not going to go, oh, this is one hour and this is half an hour. That just doesn't make any sense. So just be reasonable, guys, with your lines. Uh, so if this is one full hour, I'm going to guess half hour is, uh, that looks about half. If I'm off by a centimeter or two, who cares? doesn't matter. And then the question says, find the distance between the airport and his final landing point. Um, so it's asking me to find that distance. D. Right. In hindsight, I guess I should have drew this picture bigger so there's more space, but oh well. So your next job is to try to fill out as much information as possible. Um, so what do I know? So I know he is going uh, 200 miles per hour for one hour. 200 miles per hour, one hour. I hope it's very obvious to everyone that first leg of the journey is 200 miles. Um, then he changes direction, he goes half an hour. Well, that journey should be half as much, so this should be 100 miles. This looks like I'm um, um, set for side angle side. Now, the reason why I asked you guys to draw these compass roses or these coordinate system every single time you change uh, directions is a good trick or a good thing to utilize is that these coordinate systems, I'm going to highlight them, these coordinate systems, these lines, they're parallel to each other. And you can use that to your advantage. Um, we have lots of theorems in geometry. One theorem that is used a lot is the alternate interior angles. We know that the alternate interior angles are always congruent. So notice how this angle here is made from this transversal, which cuts through these two parallel lines. I know the alternate uh, interiors are congruent. So if this is 20 degrees, I know that this guy here is 20 degrees. We know that this right here is 90 because it is a coordinate system. And this angle here is complementary to 40, which is, what is that? That is 50. Yeah, I should have really made this bigger. So I hope everyone can see that the entire angle should be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow this guy up. This is the problem that we're solving. 200 
uh, 100. And we found out that this angle here is just the 20 plus the 90 plus the 50, which is 160. Now, what do you know? We have side angle side. This is ripe for law of cosines. So that's just, uh, you know, that's just me drawing out the information with bearings. So according to the law of cosines, side squared equals the other two sides squared added together minus two times the other two sides cosine of the angle in between. Since everything on the right hand side doesn't have a variable, I just pop that guy into my calculator, take the square root to solve for d, and we get d to be about 296 miles, right? So the hardest part of this will be drawing it out, right? Assuming you did uh, Thursday's practice with law of cosines, it's just law of cosines. I think they're pretty simple problems, but the hard part would be getting the original picture. and. Just takes practice, guys. Have uh, give it a shot. Now, part B asks: <clears throat> find the bearing from the airport to his final landing point. Now, the rule of thumb that I follow is I give the bearings in the same manner that they gave it to me. So notice how in the original problem they gave us compass or conventional bearings. That means my answer, I'm going to put it in conventional or compass bearings as well. If they gave me true bearings, I would use true bearings. So they want basically to find the bearings going backwards, right? You, um, actually, no, no, from the airport to the final point. So uh, notice how this pilot here, in order to go from start to finish, he had to take two trips, two paths. This first path and the second path. What question B is asking is, if he just went a straight shot from here to here, what would be his bearings? Now, since it's a conventional bearing, I need to figure out this angle here, the angle from north to the final line. I hope everyone can agree that we have part of it, the 20. Now all we need to do is figure out this little sliver here. In other words, for part B, I guess I'll colorize it. Um, let's do this here, I haven't used this color. For part B, it's asking us to find this angle. And what do you know? We should be able to solve the angle. We have an angle opposite side pair. We can use law of sines. We can use law of cosines. It doesn't really matter. You know me. I like to use law of cosines whenever possible to solve for side lengths. So that's what I'll go ahead and do. So I'll call this, what? Let's call this A, right? Let's call this point A for airport. Hey, that works out. Um, so what do we have here? So um, his opposite side is 100. 100 squared equals the other two sides, um, 200 squared plus, now we already solved for D, so I'm going to go ahead and um, input that in, 296 squared minus 2 times the other two sides, cosine of the angle, which is what we're looking for, cosine A. So I'm going to just do, we did the whole, you should have done the whole bunch of this on Thursday, so I'm just going to go straight to the cosine. Cosine of A equals because all it involves is subtracting this guy, subtracting this guy, and then dividing out that guy. So cosine of A equals 100 squared minus 200 squared minus 296 squared all over negative 2 times 200 times 296. So then you go ahead and take the inverse cosine, pop that into your calculator. That's about 6.6 .6 degrees. Okay. Now that's just this little sliver here. Oops. Which is this little sliver here. So the whole bearing would be adding the 20. So therefore, the pilot's bearing from start to finish is, if you go north, turn 26.6 degrees to the east. So that's it. So these problems that you'll be solving will be 100% the same as the problems you solved on uh, last Thursday, It's except you have to draw it out yourself. You have to do the bearings. 
Um, let's just do another example just because I want to I don't want to leave you more than one um, but it'll be the same concept um, another word problem so I don't know if you're bored or if you're lazy you can just fast forward through the video until I finish writing it out but this problem says this a ship is lost at sea they decide to blindly sail in hopes of finding civilization. From their current position, they set sail at a bearing of zero four zero degrees for one point five hours at twenty six miles per hour. Afterwards, they change course. to a bearing of 135 degrees and continue at speed for two hours. How far from the starting point are they? So basically this is a part A question uh, like the uh, previous example. Um, I'm not going to bother going through the part B, finding the bearings, but the, these problems are usually twofold. Find the distance, find the bearing. Um, so okay, so we have a ship that's moving and they change direction. So I'm going to start the ship somewhere. I've learned my lesson. I'm going to start him somewhere down below just in case I need the room. Um, and then what does it say? Reading, reading, reading. A ship is lost at sea. They decide to blindly sail in hopes of finding civilization. From the current position, they set sail at a bearing of, hey, they give me a bearing. So that's important. Uh, so anytime they give you a bearing, draw a quick, you know, coordinate system. Now notice it's true bearings because it gives me three digits. It does not use north, south, east, or west. So I don't care uh, where I am. I'm always measuring from north. So from north, he goes 040, which is 40 degrees. Again, just approximate it. You don't need a protractor. I think that's 40 degrees. So they sail for 1.5 hours, and then they change directions. So change directions, draw another coordinate system. This time at 135. Uh, degrees. Now you should, uh, again, 135 degrees is measured from this north here. So normally I know uh, 135 degrees from standard position is two quadrants worth. You, you go through quadrant one and quadrant two. So just visualize that but tilt it on the side. So I need to go 135 degrees, which I know is somewhere in here. So again, you don't need to break in a protractor, but just be mindful. 135. And he's going to go for two hours. So I know this line here should be longer than this line. If you don't make it longer, you might get the wrong picture. So I know he's going to be longer. Right, sure, why not? Should be one and a half times longer. Uh, and then it says find the distance from start to finish. So it wants us to find this distance. So what information do I know? They gave me speeds and time, 26 miles an hour for 1.5 hours. So 1.5 times 26 is what? That is 26 plus 13 is 39. So I know that this is 39 hour, um, miles. And then the second leg is times 2. So 26 times 2 is 40, 52.
Um, clearly, it looks like I'm set up for Law of Cosines because we have two sides here. So I'm hoping I can find this interior angle, this included angle. Uh, let's uh, use um, parallel theorems. Right, so if this is 40 degrees, I know that this is also 40 degrees by alternate interior angles. And I know that this whole line here is 180 because that's a line. Uh, so if this is if this is 135, this guy here has to be 180 minus 135, right? So you're going to have to use a little bit of geometry here. So that is 45 degrees, which means this whole angle is 85. And we're basically done. We have side angle side. That is classic law of cosines. So d squared equals the other two sides squared added together minus 2 times the other two sides cosine of the opposite angle. Uh, so we have everything we need. Just take the square root of everything and we get about 62.2 miles. Okay. So these bearings may look harder, uh, may look difficult or hard at the beginning because you're not used to it. But once you get used to it, it's just, it, it falls into place. Just draw it out. I suggest you draw it bigger than you think you need because you want room to put in numbers. Uh, draw it out, find as much information as you can, and then either use law of signs or law of cosines. Good luck. Only way you can get better at this is if you practice.